Hello, I hope you're having a wonderful day today. My name is Sophia, and if you're here, you probably want to create your own coloring books and get into the world of self-publishing. Today, I'll offer you four essential tips before you start to make your own coloring book. If you're new here and want to be inspired to create daily, whether it's books, art, or music, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm Sophia, I'm an author and an illustrator of best-selling books on Amazon, and I'm here to help you get started and answer all your questions. I currently have two coloring books out. I have my cottage core coloring book, my most recent one, is the Christmas Cookies Coloring Book Collection. So these are my two main coloring books. My first ever book that I made when I was 16 was actually a coloring and poetry book. So I have quite a lot of experience making these books. Number one, a huge and super important step before you get started is to find a niche. So you'll notice that both for my Christmas cookies coloring book and my cottagecore coloring book, these are very specific audiences, right? For me, I picked specific topics that I'm very passionate about. I love cottagecore, I even wrote a song about it. So I thought it would be great and a wonderful topic to cover. Because I'm so passionate about the subject, it was very easy for me to create these illustrations and to come up with a lot of good ideas. Um, and since I was kind of immersed in that niche already by creating the song Cottagecore, I kind of knew what my audience, what I would personally want to see in a coloring book that was cottagecore themed. Similarly, with my Christmas cookies coloring book, I wanted to capture that sort of nostalgia of being a kid around Christmas and the nostalgia of making a bunch of cookies and being able to decorate them without a lot of icing in real life. So I wanted to also create this book because my grandparents had passed away, but they were really integral in the holidays and bringing my family together. They shared a lot of great traditions with us, so I thought for my little cousins, who didn't really get to experience that since they're so young, I wanted a way to capture those memories and our traditions in a book. I also just love cookies. Cookies are a big deal in my family. All right, so after you've found your niche, the number two big thing to think about is your target audience. So as you create coloring books, you'll really want to have a target audience in mind. Is this coloring book going to be for toddlers? kids, teenagers, or adults. There's really a wide variety of books on the very simple side to the very complex side for the coloring book market. So as you're creating your illustrations or hiring an illustrator, you're really gonna wanna keep that target audience in mind. Kids coloring books for toddlers and a little bit older, like five, six, seven year olds, they have thick lines, a lot of color and space to allow kids to develop their and their motor, you know what I'm talking about, their motor abilities, motor skills. Um, <laughs> personally, in my books, the Christmas cookies coloring is definitely geared more towards kids in that age range of like about three to eight years old. So a lot of the illustrations in this are more simple and they do feature a lot more space for kids to really color in and also insert their own designs and their own imagination into the illustrations. For my cottage core coloring book, I wanted it to be geared more towards anyone from the preteen to adult age. So there are a lot more complex illustrations in this and a lot more details on the sides. Here I could show you an example of something. So this a three-year-old might enjoy coloring this, but it will be pretty difficult for them to get into those small spaces here. So I was thinking maybe this is more for teenagers and adults to kind of take their time and color in more complex designs. So you definitely want to have that in mind, who you intend to sell your books to. That doesn't mean you need to keep it very strict. I also include really simple designs because personally I enjoy coloring these more than very complex ones and I find it more relaxing. <laughs> so I wanted to include some too. This makes it more of a preteen. Even kids can color this along with their parents. So uh, you don't have to be very strict, but you do want to keep in mind a general gauge of who you are making this for. All right, now an essential number three tip is to make a coloring book, you'll need illustrations and hopefully good illustrations. Now the biggest mistake I see people making is settling for stock photos canva outlines or royalty free drawings 
While that can be an okay starting point, I really think you can offer more to the market by giving someone a unique book with your creativity and your spin on it. In addition, those royalty-free stock photos can come with some stipulations. And the last thing you want to do is run into either having to pay for those, the use of those illustrations in perpetuity or being hit with a copyright lawsuit. I really suggest either finding a trustworthy illustrator or drawing the images yourself. A lot of people on YouTube will tout that you could make tens of thousands of dollars on coloring books a month just by doing low, what they call low content books, which is essentially going on the internet, Google, searching for blank outlines and then just putting them all in one book. And while that works for some people, I really think that it's important to make something that you're proud of, to put a lot of work and passion into your art. Um, and as I said before, it will help you avoid any legal troubles and headaches down the road. I believe that you could either find a trustworthy illustrator or draw the images yourself. You can definitely do it. You could bring your ideas to life. For tip number four, you're probably wondering how can you illustrate a book by yourself and what's the best software to use to do this. I started off using my Wacom tablet that my grandma actually gave me for Christmas in like 2014 and I used that to create one of my children's books, Japanese ABCs and my Milk in Berkeley series. I used a Wacom tablet to create these very simple thick outlines and I used Photoshop to draw in. Using a Wacom tablet was pretty cumbersome just because my computer is from 2014 so it is very old and starts to feel like an airplane taking off as you keep drawing on it. It makes a lot of noises. Um, so creating this book took hours longer than it needed to just because you know my computer would crash, Photoshop crashes, the whole shebang, it, everything that could go wrong kind of did. I later updated I made enough in royalties to really justify the purchase of investing in an iPad Pro. This is my little gyoza resting peacefully. As you can even see just from that, it's um, the line work is a lot better. I was able to really improve the quality of my books by investing in an iPad Pro. And of course, there are a myriad of other less expensive choices especially the older or refurbished iPads that use Apple Pencils. I will be making a full video on the pros <laughs> and the cons of getting an iPad Pro, so if you'd like to see that, please subscribe. I make new informative tutorials every single week, and I hope that your journey making coloring books goes well. It should all just be a really fun experience for everyone involved. I know that I really enjoyed making my cottagecore coloring book and my Christmas cookie one, and so if you have any questions at all, I'm here to answer all your questions, so put them in the comments below. I make sure to check them every single day. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and that you'll subscribe to stay with me and be creative every single day. And if you'd like free coloring pages from my books, make sure to check out sophiastudios.com. I'll link it down below and sign up for my newsletter. I don't send any spam, but I do send free coloring book pages. I'll see you real soon. Stay sweet and thanks for tuning in.